After the depression of the 1930s, my father thought it would be a good idea if I learned a trade, bearing in mind that if you had a trade, you could usually find a job anywhere. And jobs at that particular time were not easy to obtain. We took this entrance exam and I passed it. And in the August of 1938, the Royal Air Force sent for me to arrive at Royal Air Force Station Halton in Buckinghamshire. I committed myself to at least 12 years, possibly if I liked I could stay on for 24 years. At Halton, the apprentices were being trained on a three years course to learn to repair and maintain airframes and engines. Unfortunately, the war came along in 1939 and it was decided that there wouldn't be enough time to train people and have them efficient at their work. So it was cut in half, that this divided us up alphabetically between engines and airframes. And I was sent to be an airframe fitter. When I finally passed out from uh, that course, it was a, a marvellous course. We had schools in the morning, very efficient teachers. We went to workshops in the afternoon and the evening and lots of uh, hobbies were laid on for us and the accommodation at Halton was very good. Ha having finished that training, I was posted to RAF Kinloss on the Moriforth to number 10 maintenance unit with the object of looking after um, repair of aircraft. I was billeted at Glenbergie Whiskey Distillery, where we right. slept on the concrete floors on straw palaces. Right. We had no lighting other than hurricane lamps, and we had one large tap on the outside for washing and shaving. So not being a nice place to stay, I used to spend ev almost every evening riding into um, Elgin and uh, living with some of the population in Elgin. Uh, finally, after what, many months at uh, Kinloss, I was posted to uh, Castle Kennedy near Stranraer. We were the first to arrive at Castle Kennedy. There were no toilets. We slept on our... We were given um, a waterproof cape, which we had to lay on the grass and sleep on this cape on the grass. Um, for the first couple of days, we had no other food except these ship's biscuits. And within the next fortnight, well, it took a fortnight before we even got bread and jam for breakfast. And this is in the United Kingdom. So after the uh, luxuries of Halton, it was quite a different story, <laughs> quite a change. You'd done your training as a fitter. Yeah, and I was working as a fitter. You're working as a fitter. And so then, what? all of a sudden, on the uh, orderly room notice board came a notice to say if you proved yourself fit enough and wanted to, you could change over to aircrew. So I took advantage of this. I applied to change over to aircrew, went down to Edinburgh, passed my medical, and later was sent for to go to London. Next thing I was sent to Manchester with a load of kit. I was posted to Right. Elementary Flying Training School, RAF Booker Marlow. Right. So but, once again, not trained on the airfield with all the others, I was sent to Denham Film Studios, right. where I learned to fly a Tiger right. Moth. The first thing would have been to learn to fly an aircraft. The second thing was to go on a, a training course. Of course, to have a wrist with. So, right. I was then kitted out as a, a pilot to be kitted right. out and sent to America.